Thank you so much. All right, everybody has to admit to got it. And so we welcome Professor Luvon Shepard, but he goes by Luvon for all of us, if that's all right. For that's questions fine, and so thank on. you. And he is a beloved professor of art and a mentor to so many people. What really impressed me about him is his vision for art and his, um, his humanitarian spreading of art as, a, as love for the community he teaches in and for, um, for distant communities like ours because he agreed to be interviewed today. And he's accompanied by my wonderful artist, uh, brother-in-law, Luke Lorenzo, who actually studied under Luan Shepard oh, so cool. two years ago. And he just retired from being a very beloved high school uh, art teacher. <laughs> to do his own art now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So I have some, I have a slideshow. Oh, what's this? Gordon, no, if you would help me to admit, ah, Ian is coming. Oops. Yeah, I think I admitted him. But thank you. If you continue, got that warning about my unstable Wi-Fi connection. I hope that doesn't mean much. So I'm going to share my screen because I want you to see both Luvon and his work. And so I'm going to start, hold on. I'm going to start a slideshow from the beginning. If, it, if this thing lets me, there, there. Um, Professor Shepard or Luvon teaches at the Rochester Institute of Technology, which is in Rochester, New York. And the way I first met him is he was doing a free community workshop right outside his gallery. Um, and he was doing it in watercolor. And what that meant is that mothers and their children would come, little kids. So here he is with me, a very sunny day. Um, I think it was May, uh, July, right, very hot. And here he is with Luke. But I want you to look at this picture because there's this guy up there doing a mural right behind us. And I'm gonna explain what that is in a minute. So I'll let you read. Uh, Luvon Shepard's work is in the per, uh, permanent collections of a bunch of places. And it starts with yes. a key hello can you guys silence your um audio please if you're not talking i appreciate it and by the way to talk you can uh hit the space bar and hold it down while you're talking and then release it and it'll go to mute all right so i'm i'm going to show you just a few pictures of Luvon from the 1970s when he, he was a recent graduate, he actually attended RIT, was a recent graduate of the school in art. And he got a job at the Memorial Art Gallery, which is the major art gallery in New York, in uh, Rochester, New York. And he started a project called All of Us, where he essentially had a program of teaching art and he would cor corner his friends in art who weren't employed and had them do teaching sessions, right? <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, Luan. You're I'm correct. just You're trying to correct. summarize what you were doing. And he, from that, he, he just started bringing people together in art. That didn't diminish his artistic accomplishment though. It was uh, art for really for art's sake and high art. So all of us became a program that was actually uh, very heralded by publications and other things. Um, and what he wanted was break down racial, economic, and generational barriers with art. And that really impressed me about, uh, about Luban. Uh, because it, it kind of mimics my mission in art starting late in my life. Um, he just, as he says here, you can see people gathering outside his gallery. It's called the Joy um, Gallery. Is that is that where it is? Am I correct there? You're uh, absolutely correct. You're right. Yeah. And then, you know, you can see people of all ilks, like all um, people in that little workshop that I attended and helped out in 
it was just full of people from other cultures and other ethnicities and and they were all like just fixed on Luvon, <laughs> but also <laughs> with each other and that was so wonderful uh oops as a tribute one of his students did this painting of him and you can see him here again teaching and he is just he has been teaching at RIT for 50 or so years. And actually there's a page at RIT uh, at the Rochester Institute of Technology that just lists the accolades that people give him from all over the world. His students have moved on and then they kind of think back about it. So you can see it and I sent the link out yesterday if you received it. So I just wanted to give you a sense of what a person he is. But back to that um, mural that was being painted behind us, it turns out that the city of Rochester has a beautification pro project and there are murals um, that sort of mim mimic uh, uh, works of art throughout the city. And this, is, this happens to be, um, this is the muralist who is essentially recreating Louvain's watercolor of two maintenance workers at RIT on the walls. And this is what the, what the mural looks like, which I thought was amazing. How many of us get our mural, get a, get a mural of our That's work funny. up there? And just in case um, you think that he slacks and sort of rests on his laurels, I wanted to show you his current teaching schedule. I, I, I could not do this. I don't know how many of us could do this. So some of his work, and now I'm going to invite him in to talk to us, please, um, and tell us a little bit about some of his work and, and the evolution of it. Now, he told me he started teaching watercolors because nobody else it, it, as a junior faculty member nobody else wanted to teach it right and take well, it from your luan well the all of us art workshop is where the it started um it, 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 uh, we I, we had a uh a, 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 a bunch of classes there at all of us i mean from stained glass window cutting to figure drawing oil painting all kinds of classes i think they're must have been 15 to 20 classes. Whoa. And watercolor was one of them. Nobody, none of the people that I had had there in the group wanted to teach watercolor or they were afraid of teaching watercolor. So I took on the task of teaching watercolor in 19, I think 1970, 1971. And, uh, and from there, I started teaching watercolor uh, exclusively at RIT. So this went on for a number of years. <laughs> That's great. And can you tell us a little bit about this work, which is incredibly large? This particular piece here is a, it's a four by five um, foot watercolor. And, um, and it's, um, it's called Charity. And and really, what I what I was doing at that particular time is combining the immediate environment with current events, along with biblical scriptures, and uh, and so this is one of the, I think the fifth or sixth piece that I did, which uh, my mother, as you know, was a uh, was a minister, and uh, and she was very much into. Taking, uh, being a being a humanitarian, she loved people, and uh, and she always gave and helped people uh, as well as ministered to them, you know, through the use of the Bible, et cetera. But um, but here she is on that on that level oh. in that church above everybody, and you got the heart. Oh wow! Which somebody gave me again something that 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 uh, that was physically close to me, um, I, 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 I sort of juxtaposed it into the image of people going to see a fire. Now, why some people going to see a fire, I don't know. 
<laughs> but um, but the other part of it is a is, is a is a school bus, and not a school bus, but uh, but a commercial bus right. on Main Street in Rochester, and it's supposed to be a crossroads. And um, um, and uh, another thing that I was interested in was reflections. Looking at windows, walking by windows, you would see reflections of traffic, reflections of people, reflections of yourself. And so I saw all of this here real world um, uh, current events and the spiritual world all combined as one. Right. And this oh, is what wow. I try to put together here. And this piece is where now do you, uh, does it this hang at RIT? This particular piece is, is uh, I own this particular piece. Um, okay. You know, um, because, you know, I, I don't want to let right. it go. Uh, and it's also <laughs> being it's being used um, uh, at the uh, Museum and Science Center here in Rochester currently as a backdrop for a waterworks exhibition wow. that they have set up. Oh, wonderful! Mm -hmm. Wow, I'm going to go ahead and and talk and just show a few a few images of your work, and then you'll tell us a little about the progression if you can. So as I understand, this is a sketch, right? For, that you do for yourself. Yeah, yeah, this is a, this is a plain air painting. It's a study. Um, yeah, right. And, uh, and it's of Canadice Lake, which is a, a lake that's about 25 or 30 miles from here. And I think we get our drinking water from Canadice Lake. Um, but I go there with a friend of mine that I've been working with over 50 years ago. Wow. And, and uh, so we go out and uh, uh, start in the spring and we work through the summer and the beginning of the fall or late into the fall. And wow. so um, I've, I've done a series of these paintings and this is one of the, I think this looked like one of the, the first few paintings that I started uh, yes. working there uh, uh, at Canada's Lake. And um, uh, I'm using uh, transparent watercolor there seems to be, uh, looks like there's a, some grease pencil you use here, some white pencil. Ah, that sort of, right, sort maybe of, some uh, resist almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, and, uh, and what I'll do is put that white pencil down and then I'll glaze over it with right. the watercolor. So ah. it sort of shimmers. And, and it's, it's based on the reflections that I'm getting from the water itself. Right. And, but also wow. the sky is misty and, so, you know, uh, I just used the mixed media thing to, to uh, amplify the transparent quality of the watercolor. Can I ask you if you paint like you're, uh, when you're doing plein air, are you painting vertically or do you sit down? I sit down. Mm -hmm. I, well, I sit and stand, but mostly See? sit down because yeah. I'm lazy. Okay. More than <laughs> yeah, anything. it's curious how yeah. people do. Yeah. Um, yeah. We no, had I just, workshop with, sorry. Yeah, I just take a little rock or something and I elevate the paper. And uh, I, I normally I paint on uh, using a stretch piece of paper. I stretch it before I get there. Wow. And, uh, and then I lay that on, on a branch or a rock or something like that to ele elevate it up about 25 degrees. Sort of the 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 water. So you incline the plane. Down. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Right. Then you can use the the falling sort of water if you exactly, like. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Great. You know, Great. I I I I, I, I spent is... a lot of time working with washes. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And, and this is probably oh. another plain air. Yeah. Yeah. And and here I've used some. Oops, um, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I use some liquid um, um, uh, masking fluid mm -hmm. for some of the areas. I can see as I look at that, um, some of the areas there, I put the, I down the masking fluid and then I um, paint it over it. Great, yes. And this is really for you, although they're also posted and I think these works can be, uh, are framed in some places and have exactly. been shown. Exactly, exactly. for you, it kind of yeah. your own. They're my personal, uh, yeah, they're personal yeah, development. Yeah, my personal <laughs> studies. Wonderful. Um, and this is one of your early, would you say, watercolors. 
sort of that's transparent right. watercolors. That's right. That's right. In this particular one, I use a slide projection for this painting, uh, mm -hmm. and um, and and I use I put honey or rock candy in the water itself to re retard the runniness of the water. Oh, and, when I, and I paint vertically. Wow. I paint, paint while this is vertically uh, in front of me so the, the the colors wouldn't run down as much. Wow. So you add honey to the water. That's very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I have to try that. I've never, I know that some watercolors are made with honey as a medium. That's right. That's right. Like M. Um, Graham. That's right. That's right. You're absolutely correct about that. But that's something that started later. I think, I think that, mm -hmm. that, that, that was, a that, that medium um, was developed later. I truly used more of gum Arabic. Um, yeah. But uh, I started this back in 1969, 1970, long before I knew anything Whoa. about that medium. So M. Graham copied it from you. <laughs> um, I'm not no, sure. But, uh, I, I, really, I got that from, I think, probably from studying the work of Turner. Yes, fabulous. You know, I'm a, yeah, I'm a student of Joseph Turner. And did he so, use do you did you find out if he that he used that? That's brilliant. Yeah, yeah something to retire the water, the runniness of the water. But there's many, many other things that he did, such as scraping out the painting, you know, additives and subtractives, you know, right. that he used, different methods that he would use. And I I just copied them. <laughs> you know, Good and, for you. Using them over the years. Thank you. Wow. Oops, sorry, sorry. That's I, all right. Uh, someone else coming. And this is one of the more contemporary watercolors, would you say, or about uh, in the last 10 years? Or Well, it might, uh, I, you know, I'm so old now, I forget the time. <laughs> no, you <laughs> <laughs> But I would say at least, at least 15 years ago, 10 to 15 uh -huh. years ago, I did this. So 10, 15. Uh, and this, is, this is done on... Um, You'll notice that this paper this is a little different. It looks different than the other. And that's because it's on hot press watercolor paper. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, okay. 300 pound hot press watercolor paper. Uh -huh. This is a much more flat plated surface. Okay. A hot roller is rolled over this. So right. you can see that there's a different kind of application of paint yes. with both the uh, the smooth um, yes. rated wash as well as, yeah. Yeah, as well as just the the heavier washes glazed on top. How interesting. So the idea of using the the very transparent smooth um, planar washes and then the planar washes that are a little bit more um, heavier. Right. And, and, and I see that this it. is framed a floating frame so exactly. that you see the edges of exactly. the paper as exactly. well. Mm -hmm. Very, very interesting. I'm going to keep going because you have a lot of work and I want to show as much as possible. This is a tribute to Frederick Douglass, who yeah. was a Rochesterian. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, he's a, he was a, he was a social worker. He was a minister. Uh, wonderful minister, I mean, that uh, um, uh, whereby the word was woven into the embodiment of his life and, and, wow. and, and his orations. And, wow. and he's key. He's almost like me using Turner and the techniques of Turner in my paintings. I use what he advocated in his life experience and, mm -hmm. and, his, and his orations as part of part and parcel of what it is that I do content wise with my artwork. Right. Wow. And I asked Louvon if he um, used um, stencils to do the lettering and he told me no. <laughs> so that this is done mostly freehand. Am I correct? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can see it. I, I am so admiring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's like, uh, you know, it's handwriting. 
it's, right. it's um, I mean, it's, it's the human touch. That's right. more important to me than the accuracy. Yeah. You no, know, it's how everything collectively works together. I'm more concerned right. about that. Very interesting. And here you are looking at a variety of your work, which was on exhibit. And I'm going to go to the next big, big one. Yeah, this painting was probably done somewhere uh, around 1992 or something, 94, okay. 96, A little bit older, okay. Could be, yeah, it could right. be right in that period of time. I know it was in the, in the 90s. Um, right. And um, uh, it, it, again, I've used current events. I've mm -hmm. used the natural environment, physical environment, as well as some biblical mm -hmm. uh, elements here in, mm -hmm. uh, in this painting. You know, um, many times I'll use the four gospels. Um, uh, so you see the lion and, or, and you see ah. the face of a man, you see the face of an ox you know, yes. uh, the, the eagle, but those well, are the wow. four gospels and those things are constantly being, you know, preached in through, through the church or on the radio or whatever. Oh, but also, right. there's also these things that are, that are going on in terms of current events. Right. And this was during the time of, uh, when President Bush, I think George Bush was the president yes. at that time. Right. And, then we, right. and then we have the Emir of Kuwait they wow. been during that period of time um in, in 1998 i believe and and um uh -huh. and what we have we have the red horse which is war uh the black horse symbol of pestilence and then the white horse is both you know antichrist uh as well as the christian movement you know um coexisting simultaneously uh -huh. These are spiritual forces more than anything else. So, you know, we had wars and rumors of wars, and certainly we had earthquakes and all kinds of mm -hmm. other things going on at that time. So, and again, the, sort of a reflective look to the whole thing where you superimpose. Exactly. You. Exactly. It's a form are of. Are you reality. projecting them, do you think, or are you imagining the superimposition? Um, uh, I, I project a lot of images, but uh, some of the images, I mean, like the images is put together in, 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 in uh, position wise or design wise or compositionally as being a wheel or in the, in the symbol of a cross. I, I see, so, sort of. So it's yeah, sort of a Mandela. Sort of I mean, the, yeah, the symbolism okay. is, is, is really the placement of the symbolism. Uh, compositionally is the thing that I was most mostly interested in. And of yeah. course, the clouds sort of pull everything together. Right. And it's a good horizontal to, yeah, to exactly. bring reflections. That's yeah. very interesting. Oops. It's a four by uh, oh, I'm sorry. Four my four mouse four. is it's okay. a little hyperactive. <laughs> I hear that this bridge no longer exists. That's what so, I hear. That's what I understand. I think at that time, I so was it's a green bridge it, near yeah. Rochester. Uh, Again, at plain right. air. It's Letchworth Park. Letchworth State oh. Park. But it, the bridge has been replaced. But that ah. bridge is no longer there. It's a dip, it's an arch now. It's a modern arch. Ah. Yeah. And okay. this is a, a state park with a large fault. That's a waterfall underneath. Wow, beautiful. beautiful space. So, wow. Yeah. And and you also do a little bit of sculpture. I found this in a video. <laughs> <laughs> Which so you're repurposing kind of things that you find. Yeah, yeah. The sculptures are just like my paintings. They're they're found objects. They're things uh -huh. that I that I that I I find around that I I um. I find them to, to be interesting to look at. You know, um, I think I made a statement um, in, in one of my lectures about sort of getting a handle on things. Yes. So, so the, those handles, I don't know where they came from, but, uh, but they, <laughs> they seem to work well with the, with the driftwood 
and uh, and um, the the circle that was bought from a craft store, and uh, but they're just found objects. And then I've I've, I've sort of um, added some painting, some of yes the surfaces yeah. that are painted. Yeah, so so it's a collage montage mm -hmm. type of a three dimensional. Right. And I see your other painting back here hanging in the same gallery. That's yeah. great. Yeah. The big one. That, that yeah. Let me see. Sure. Oops. Now, um, oops, sorry. My, my, I don't know what the matter is with my. So this is the cover of a book of your work that you put together. The, right? Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. It's called. Can you tell us a little about what could, what's in that book? It's, it's, it's a book called Mirror the Word. And again, it's, it's um, their images mostly made up from my face and my daughter's face. I have four daughters. And, um, and I, you know, I think about the genealogy or the, the legacy that will go on throughout our lives, not just mine, but, but through our lives and, and, the, and the interconnections that we have uh, with each other through life and the journeys that we're having in our lives, and um, and at the same time, I'm very interested in the in the, in the African sculpture. So the multiplicity of the faces, along with the multiples of of, of of the profiles of my face and my daughters, I just combine all of that thing, all of those things, in relation relationship with with landscapes. Not so much the look of a of a, of, a, of, a, of a landscape, but just borrowing things like the sky, the clouds, um, the land mass, and so on and so forth, and just sort of combine all of those things together. That's great. And I think you told me, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that um, you're looking at your old pieces of uh, watercolor on paper and sort of cutting them up, which I think is so brilliant. Yeah, this is made up of uh, pieces of mylar, which is uh, somebody gave oh, me. This, um, this. Uh, yeah, they gave me some mylar, and uh, and then I looked at some of my old watercolors or discarded pieces that I painted and never finished, <laughs> and uh, and I started to cut them up and. Love play around with them. This whole idea of being inventive and creative and, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, cutting and pasting. Yes. I think I got that idea basically from uh, Robert Motherwell, who said when he ran out of ideas, uh, he, would, he was usually, he, he would go back to working with montages and collages. I, I think he called them shingle lays. You know? <laughs> and, uh, and he would... Uh, Use that to stimulate himself so that he he would he would produce more work, you know. And uh, and so when I come into my studio, um, I'm not necessarily thinking of a medium or some kind of materials. I just come in and start walking around, looking around, and combining things. Um, uh, it's just sort of a natural sensibility. To do that, I mean, if I can find something to 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 paste or glue something down together, you know, uh, I find that to be interesting. Wonderful, in a way, like you mix people together, um, exactly. community together. You, I think that's really good. I'm going to have to use that. <laughs> no charge. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, so this piece is sort of a combination, and maybe it's a, a digital combination, right? Of what we just saw, because yeah. it's at the bottom. Yeah, again, uh, it's, like, it's sort of a totem. Yeah, yeah, it's like a totem pole or a piece of African sculpture. Um, um, oh. And I, and you know, when I look at um, the different movements or dynasties of of Asian art. I see that juxtapositioning, vertical juxtapositioning of imagery. You know, it's like there's there's many stories woven yes. into a story. Wow. You know, the complexity of that is wow. always interesting to me. And wow. how do you do that? I mean, it's hard it's hard to do that on a two dimensional surface. 
uh, you know, uh, horizontally, you know, or 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 circularly or circle wise or whatever, but but vertically, it seems to work more totemically with life itself. Yes. Yeah. And, and of course, you spend a, you can spend a lot of time. They make a visual impact, but when you get close, you have lots of sort of little gifts <laughs> to the viewer. Yeah. Um, yeah. Of trying to figure out how it was done. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of little little stories, little woven. Well, they're not so much narrative stories as they are stimulating form structures and you know I mean yeah. I mean the torn pieces of paper the hard edge and the torn edge and uh, the multiplicity and all of those things just uh it's just I, I enjoy it I mean it's stimulating yes. to me it's a it's right. a, a how to make them all collectively work together yes. co cohesively is the thing that I think turns me right. on wow and um this is gorgeous too. I love that, you know, you tear watercolor paper because it's not an easy paper to collage, but that's what gives it the three dimensionality at the same time. And it looks a little, I mean, more sculptural, of course, than, than just thin collage. Yeah, um, yeah. And I find, I find that if, if you use a 300 pound uh, piece of watercolor behind it that that enhances the integrity of the piece are you mounting it on 300 um yeah most of like the time that's what I, yeah most of the time that's what i do or else okay. i'll collectively put them together so they have yes. a, a more rigid structure to them right right so this would be quite rigid there's a, this beautiful um um yeah, so this more faces, more overlap, and sort of rotating around the central yeah, igniting I, feature. The piece that was on the front cover, I just turned it to the side. Mm -hmm. so, and it looks different. Oops, sorry. Yeah, I looks, found this one on uh, um, not on, not displayed on a website, but on the on a video recording of an interview of you, and I thought that was really interesting yeah this is this is one that i that i really i think i sold this one ironically um yeah but i you can see here i have just mixed everything to uh, i love this together. quotation yeah. who is who is the quote by luvan you remember i don't i do not remember yeah, Frederick, is that, that really resonated. Not, it's, it's not Frederick Douglass. Yes. Quote, his uh, images in there. His, yeah, yeah and Frederick Douglass images is in there. But um, if you right. want something you have never had, then you must do something you have never done. I don't know okay. where it came from, <laughs> but I stole it. I adopted it. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds very real to me. I love it. Right. Yeah. Yes, I do too. I love it. it um, I can see your face here on sort of looking at us and at the same time in profile, which is. You see my, and right next to me is my daughter's face. And it's a little bit. Ah. As, you, as you saw earlier, my granddaughter, if I didn't have her here to help <laughs> me out, we would be in trouble. Yes, we are all in trouble without a young That's person right. in our lives. You got it. You got <laughs> that very right. Very young person. That's great. I love this piece too. I mean, I love them all. Mm. Um, this is like a diptych and you you even mounted it so it projects the shadow. Yeah, Very yeah. Interesting. Yeah, again, so again, when I put that, 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 that heavier piece behind it, yeah. you know, and I, I try to create a bar relief. I, and like I said before, yes. I'm strongly influenced relief. by sculpture. Yes. So having that little shadow there again creates something yes. illusion wise that that um that That's I can create right. otherwise, yeah. Wow. Again, wow. So what 
after you cut, you are looking for images to unite. For example, you might extend the tree or, or not, or not necessarily. Well, well, when I first started experimenting with these, with, uh, with, with cutting up the watercolors, uh -huh. and I thought I was doing something very abstract and unique. It was without uh -huh. the, the profiles of the faces. And it was just abstract form, just circulars or, or circular or circles or or you know just forms. Yeah. And uh, and some of them were were just torn pieces of paper, you know. And and when I collectively put them together, one of my students says, "Oh, they remind me of your of your um of your landscapes." And of course, wow. I didn't see landscapes. I mean, that was that was <laughs> the farthest thing from my mind. But once the student said that to me, um, I began right. to to reinforce that whole thing, and and so the the, the landscapes, you know, be, became more and more part of uh, the um, the collective imagery. Wow, that's great. Another, I I love how this tree sort of follows the. Um, yeah, you know, I was taking I was dance. taking G clay prints of my mm -hmm. work, uh, and I didn't like the idea of um, of of taking my watercolors and reproducing them and selling them, you know, cheaper or whatever. Right. Um, and um, somebody, I, I guess, some gallery said that they would never sell any work that was not <clears throat> original. Original. And uh, and so I said, well, you know, what I'll do is just take the take the reproductions that I've had done and use them the same way I would use magazine cutouts, right. recreate imagery with them. And so that's where this idea came yeah. from. Very interesting. Thank you for explaining that. Uh, oops, sorry, I meant to. This is about you. <laughs> yes, yes. Again, yeah, again, the, 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 again, these were um, some cards that I that I was using for a show. Oh. And um, and we took I took the cards and I took a profile of my face and I cut them up and and juxtaposed them and put them back together and uh, and through the use of um, look like a series of things that I've done here with spray paint as well as uh, going back over some of the images using mixed media techniques. Um, I, com I combine them back together. Again, this combination of, of a sculpture uh, and uh, a two-dimensional form right. constructively being put together is yeah, something that I was interested in. Love this one too, with the sort of incomplete um, lettering, but sort of uh, evoking more than telling. <laughs> yes, uh, that's a good that's a good word that you just used. I think that's that's really the the content behind everything that I do. Mm -hmm. I don't narratively make a I don't narratively make a complete statement. It's just it's just to provoke right. thought, you know, and to generate thoughts. Hopefully, in a in a in a in a in a, much, in a broad, humane right. fashion. Would you tell people a little bit about your when you grew up? Or you told me, and I forgot to ask you before, but um, where how you grew up with your grandparents and your parents were traveling. Um, yeah, and you yeah. were looking at the sky and the clouds. Yeah, yeah, and I, um, yeah, clouds are very important to me. I, I guess uh, my father was in World War II. My mother um, had left to to come north to try to find a better living for for uh, for me and my brothers, and um, and so um, um, I was left you know, with, with, with my grandparents. Um, and they were good people. They were, um, I love my, my, my father's uh, parents, 
but they weren't my real parents. And I've and I felt that lost. And and uh, and many times I would go out in the yard by myself and wonder where was my parents, you know, and what were they doing? And, you know, and I'm and I got I'm uh, wondering why they weren't there for more than anything else. They couldn't and I, text you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I started looking at the clouds. Wow. And and I I had this strange vibration from the clouds and and I think at that particular point, I, I became very concerned about who God was. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I and I'm still concerned. I mean, uh, that same kind of feeling has been with me all my life. And and that's that's probably uh, something that I'm still searching for is that is that 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 encounter that I had when I was a child. They gave me so much peace and confidence and wow. being who I was. And the love that I that I got from that, that, that source was very important. And I think I also mentioned to you that the thing that started me to think about art was some hands that I saw. I didn't see my father's face for many years. Um, and, uh, and so um, he made, he, uh, he, he drew a profile of a face and then he took the cuff of his pants, cut them off, his khaki pants, and made a little cap for my head and put a little uh, insignia from the army pendant on the cap. Mm. And, um, and also he made a little boat with a propeller with a, raise, with a rubber band on the back that he, he put on the water after, after he made it and it kind of moved across the water. And this is something that has stuck with me and uh, and really uh, brought me into who I am, I, I believe, as a visual artist. Mm -hmm. I knew I, I would always work with my hands and I always loved to create painting and drawing things, even before I could read or write. That's wonderful. What a great story. Thank you. Um, I have some more, but maybe we could open it up to some questions that people might have. Um, since you, you're so rich in experience and thought, um, do people have questions for Luvon? Yeah, I have a quick question. Was your, was your family supportive of your pursuit of, of visual arts or teaching? My mother especially. Uh... She she didn't know much about art. She she only had uh, fourth grade education, but uh, but she was um, she was a very bright woman, um, and a woman that encouraged us to always do better. Matter of fact, I knew that the reason that she left us was to find a better life for us so that we could get a better education. So upward mobility has never been a problem for me because I know that that's something that she worked fully throughout her life for. Yeah. Of course, many families are sort of not as supportive of an that's art true. pursuit. That's true, especially art. But she yeah. always, I mean, she always encouraged me and, you know, um, and I know that, um, you know, I mean, I was always, I was the first, to, first in the family to get educated, and uh, um, probably have gone farther than anybody else that I know of in my immediate family, um, uh, as far as far as getting an education. But um, still, she, you know, I mean, even with me advancing in that area. I still had to knuckle down and do everything else everybody else had to do. <laughs> you know, you had to wash the dishes, you had to carry the garbage out, you had to buckle down and be a, a normal person. <laughs> right, right. But what is so wonderful is that you can then encourage others in the community who might have very humble beginnings and whose family may not be supportive. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So yeah. that's your sort of a per, a, in locum parentis for for art. <laughs> yeah. For, yeah. 
um, youngsters. Penny, you had a question. Uh, yes, um, I have to say, I am so impressed with you and also with your work. It's just beautiful and you're so creative. Um, do you teach anything virtually? <laughs> 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 or did you have to I don't feel I don't feel, I don't feel adequate enough to do justice <laughs> in that area, but I, I you know you know my students um you know they 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 text me all the time and send me work and I comment and I have a friend who's in who's in a Mexican friend that I converse with or that I that send me work and and I and I taught him some things. He's still doing some great, some great art work. So I mean, indirectly yes, but uh, directly I that's not something that I that that I really think that I do well. And what about your book? Does your book have instruction in it, or is it um, mostly your paintings and your work? It's more it's more of a picture book than anything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm scrolling you. through some of your art because I, I want people to be able to see it more as you're talking. I, well, I have to you. tell you that two of my favorite artists are Mary White and Jonathan Green. And um, and I, I see a little bit of what they do in your work is in combination almost. I don't know. I've, I, I, you're most likely familiar with Mary White. And do, do you know Mary, Jonathan Green? Well, I know that they're both colors. Yeah, yeah. That's all I know of. <laughs> I don't, I don't I know them individually, no. Their, their works, yeah. Yeah. Mariana, I posted a question in the chat. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Um, Sorry. Luvon, could you t talk a little bit more about your inspiration, um, where it comes from for you? And especially, this is important for me, what do you do when it comes and goes, ebbs and flows? <laughs> <laughs> well, my 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 inspiration. Should I really... stop sharing so we can <laughs> let me stop sharing so we can see one another better? Yeah, yeah. I think I think my my sort of inspiration comes from those clouds again. It's it's my connection with um it's my spiritual sensibility uh and the spiritual connection that I have with God. Um um I, I, every day is a new day. It's a new experience. Um, and and uh, when I look back and I see where I come from, I can see evidence of that spiritual elements in my life. And that's the thing that um, that I feel more comfortable about and secure about. You know, um, and I and I see it in people. I see it in in uh, the way people respond, not only to me, but to each other. Um, and there's, you know, there's, there's, there's motivation, there's hope and there's joy in that. And, and I've, I've, I certainly have landed in the, in the one, the most wonderful pro profession for me that I, that, that could ever have happened, you know. Did we, um, someone asked about, could you, uh, they're really enjoying your work and asked about the, some of the physical demands. Is that correct? Who uh, ever asked the question if I'm voicing it correctly? Yeah, yeah. Um, Jump in if you want to clarify. Yeah, I, I, think, I think research, reading research and um, learning, that's something that I can't do enough of. And I need that, I, I need that for my students. I think my students feed on that, but on, not only that, they feed it. Not only do they get it from me, but they give back to me. Okay, so um, um, I just think, I'm just thankful that I, I still have the energy, you know, the physical energy, but as far as the spiritual motivation, that, that's, a, that's gonna always be there. I love it. I love it. And, and I think that uh, uh, Mariana and, and I have been touched by the same spirit in that particular area. She can't stop. I hope so. I God bless you. I hope so. <laughs> um, yeah. Absolutely. 
um, that's other questions, other thoughts. Ian, go ahead. Mariana had talked in the beginning about the initiative where you brought art into the Rochester barber shops. Can you talk a little bit more about that and what that looked like? <laughs> that goes way back, 50 years ago. But um, but yeah, I when I worked at the Memorial Art Gallery, my job was to bring art, bring art from the gallery into the well, I that's what I thought. Yeah. Bring art from the from the gallery into the community as well as bring people from the community into the gallery. So those are those are, you know, people who were not familiar uh, with art. And so one of the things that I did was establish something called a soul in. And a soul in was basically to have food that was created by oh. members of the church um, that, that, you know, that, as a fundraiser for the church to have them to come to the gallery to, to buy food that would, and, and the proceeds would be given to the church. And then at the same time, I had um, the bottom of the bucket or Garth Fragan dance to come in and do a dance performance. So I would oh. combine the performing arts uh, with the food thing, and then at the same time, have somebody come in and do some, some painting, a painting demonstration or ceramic demonstration. So that it would be, it would be more activity based. And, uh, and then at the same time, get people to come in and they couldn't help but look at the work that was on the wall of course. as well as enjoy these other things. So that was, that was a way to get, get the community to come in who wouldn't normally come into the community. But then at the same time, to bring artwork from the gallery uh, and, and place it into, into these, um, uh, um, into the beauty, well, I didn't go as far as the beauty parlors, but but the uh, the, the place where you get your haircuts and uh, and put them there uh, and let the work stay there for a month and then bring it back to the gallery from time to time, and that would stimulate people, and uh, and so I couldn't keep that up for a long period of time because it it, it took a lot of energy, yes. and and ultimately I combined all of that into all of us. Yes. And so from for a few years, that's what I did, you know, at the gallery. Um, and then and then later it branched off into all of us. I almost can't imagine doing that now, unfortunately, because of liability issues. Absolutely. But it's a fantastic absolutely. idea. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've been called out on the carpet many times Aww. for, uh, for uh, having over 700 people in the auditorium when the max was 700 people. Ouch. So I would get more people in there, and and so the so the administrators, you know, some of the people got really upset about that, and I got called on the carpet a few times <laughs> because of the success. Of or the taking person. artwork to the barber shop and, and yeah, sort of exactly. leaving yeah. it there, unless yeah. you had to be there with it all the time. But what a brilliant idea! I mean, one could think of iterations of that of bringing like prints. Uh, frame prints if they would if the author of the works would let it some of them are dead so you can't exactly uh, that are in the gallery exactly, exactly. <laughs> just uh i guess that, some of them are out of copyright so that would be easier <laughs> than yeah, the other ones yeah, that's true that's <laughs> but true. you want to see originals of course and that's so the all of us i think is also another brilliant uh, approach especially for inner city and this gallery, would you say, Luke and Luvon, that they that it is in sort of, I mean, Rochester is relatively small in the sense that the gallery serves uh, poor neighborhoods too. It's not too far away. Well, the position that I had there at the Memorial Art Gallery is still being observed to this day. They still have people working Wonderful. in that capacity. You know, wow, okay. yeah, that's amazing. Uh -huh. Yes, well, Mariana, yes, can I just yes. ask a quick question? Of course, um, Levon, when you were talking about um prepping your watercolor paper so that you get that kind of stippled 
effect with the painting repelling the water? What was it you were using? What I used I used uh, I used Crayola uh, crayons. I used a grease pencil, and I used uh, um, colored pencils. Yes, you know, you mean um, like those uh, grease pencil, like those china markers. That yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, or I was similar. thinking it was something yeah. that you painted on that you spread over the uh, watercolor paper. Yes, a masking of some kind. There was there was the one oh, the, with the, the the liquid liquid frisket the, the liquid, liquid yeah. frisket the liquid man oh okay yeah, that's yeah, right. yeah, okay yeah. thank you so yeah. much yeah you can that's, actually do that also with uh, rubber cement you don't have yeah, to buy yeah, frisket yeah yeah the, and yeah. also a glue called tear mender okay which, um, good is, I have to write this very, down Mariana I won't remember it's a liquid that. latex. Basically, frisket is liquid latex. Oh, okay. But but you know, um, Windsor Newton makes it, and and other high high end art supply shops. But you can certainly try rubber cement. Although I have not tried it, have you, Luvon or Luke? Um, yeah, yeah, I've tried rubber cement, and and um, you know, and I, I, from my from my reading, it says that yeah. Um, it tends to, to, to turn the paper yellow yeah. over a ah, period of time. Even when you remove it, uh, I yeah, see, because yeah. it stays in. Yeah, and even okay. when you use the when you use the um, uh, when you use the the liquid mass, it's gonna you know you notice in the painting, I I didn't have a lot of control over the edges. Yes, it looked that's just the, like a brush stroke or the mark. Yeah, that the so you have to take like a, a toothbrush or some other brush and kind of smooth that edge out. Soften the edge, to, right. You know? So, so uh, you know, I, 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 use, um, I use shelving paper. I use... Uh, 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 oh, you mean like a mask, right? With yeah, contact yeah, paper. Yeah, that yeah I use thing. contact paper. I use yeah. uh, uh, wrap that has an uh, adhesive. The tape that you use for... for, uh, for um, or um, for taping paper down or taping boxes. Right, masking paper. Anything that's transparent, tape. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, and, I, and I cut the tape. I don't, I don't just right. use the tape edge the way it is. I, I cut the mm -hmm. edge, okay? Yeah. And when I pull the edge off of the paper, I pull it at an angle rather than right. with the, 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 the edge right. itself. So it doesn't tear. Yeah, it doesn't tear the, the paper. paper, yeah. Yeah, very good. I was just, I was gonna add because, um, you know, Luvan was celebrated last year by RIT because for 50 years of teaching. But I remember probably 35, 38 years ago when I had you, I remember right <laughs> a revelation. He had this 300 pound watercolor paper and he just takes it out of the sink and he's like, I don't like this area. And he just like, <laughs> washed right under the like, warm water and then he just scrubbed it right off and it was like such a revelation <laughs> to see someone just deal with the paper like like no I'm going to make this you know right work and not be all delicate with it but right I, I mean I we have a colleague coming a little bit later who's going to do some framing for him who had you 40 years ago <laughs> that I taught with but it's just he has such a legacy and uh, his gallery right now, Joy Gallery, is in the Frederick Douglass, uh, Susan B. Anthony neighborhood, which is ah. on North Main Street. So I'll put in a little plug for your gallery. And if you're ever in town, yes. come down. he spends Joy. every Saturday here. He opens up the doors to people. And there's an exhibit right now by a couple of young, young artists. And then he opened it up for the art education program. They hosted their uh gallery exhibit last spring which i came to and he graciously opened up the space so and there's and, food and there was Often. Food, <laughs> and there was there was food and so he's just you know 50 plus years of opening himself up to the community so when you talk about inspiration it's it's it's, it's mutual it's he he's still inspiring us you know yes. 30 40 years later so I, I, yeah he, it's, God bless you, Luke. Luke is an Reedy, example of what I, you give out, and and Luke, Luke is, a, is an example of how it comes back. 
<laughs> you know, I mean, you know, I mean, to have those things, those nice things said about yes. you, you know, that's yeah. <laughs> you don't have to do that yourself. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. You know, there was a recent article in the New York Times about, um, and I couldn't find the link to the article this morning, but I read it a few days ago about older artists and thrive, how older artists are thriving, like David Hockney and several others whose well. name I can't yeah. remember right now, but, um, but like art keeping you young, I think. And it's like that mission or that vision you have is what just keeps giving. And it's it's just amazing. And I think many artists probably are propulsed by it or or like are keep going on on that fuel of, of inspiration right. and vision. I thank you. And right. it's, I it is right. so amazing to talk with you, Luvon. And I so thank you very much. I, I don't know how to to thank you enough for what you do. I, I've been learning about it. I wish we were closer in your community, but anybody visiting Rochester, you have to go to the Joy Gallery, especially on Saturdays and meet well, Luan, because he's you, an amazing person and well, thank artist you. Thank you. and teacher and mentor. Thank you. Are there any more questions before we close? Any thoughts or let me see if in the chat I missed anything. What what was the substance use of watercolor paper? I think you we we tried to answer that one. Yeah, I um I want to go take a class with you too, but I don't know how I can do it. <laughs> you travel I, I, to uh, to this area to DC. <laughs> do you ever well, travel? To I can travel. I can travel. You get a group of people. We together, can bring I can you. Come. I will come. All right. Yay. Yeah. That would yeah. be fantastic. And Luke, you yeah. come too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, wouldn't that be great? Will your wife that. object or will she come along? Well, she would love for me to go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she, she's downstairs oh. waiting for us right now. So <laughs> she's doing what, Luke? She's downstairs. She waits. She comes and waits for Luvan. Oh, right. Great. I, I met her that day at the workshop. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, I, I hope we hear more from you and about you. Uh, let me see. I think there's a new chat. Do you show in Boston nowadays? Do you does your work go to Boston sometimes? I will I will go wherever <laughs> I am invited. <laughs> You know, well, yeah, I have, I have breath will travel. <laughs> <laughs> have watercolor paper will travel. <laughs> have, yeah, yes, by all, all means. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Well, thank you so very much. This well, was wonderful you. to, to be you. with you, spend an hour, and thank I wish you. we could do more, but maybe you'll come back in a few years. I would love and we'll that. interview you again. I would love that. I would <laughs> love that. in a few months. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Luan. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you.